Welcome into Cronkite Sports Live. I'm Elaine Wilson alongside Zach Pocklib. And Zach, this very well may be the last time that we are behind the anchor desk this semester. Are you feeling nostalgic? I refuse to get nostalgic. Lacrosse teams in playoffs. The Diamond Sports are in full <laughs> swing. We have no time, and no pun intended, by the way. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, let's get into the swing of things then <laughs> with ASU softball. The ASU softball team has some serious history. Coming into this season, the Devils had a 788 win percentage over the last 10 years. That includes 167 consecutive weeks ranked in the USA Today coaches poll. That's likely about to end. The Devils have hit a six game skid, and this clearly isn't the same Sun Devil team that we saw only a few years ago. Arizona State wins the 2008 National Championship. <laughs> Obviously highs and lows with the Sun Devil team and they've had a lot this year so to break it all down we bring in our softball insider Jacob Franklin. Now Jacob the offense has been up and down like we've said before. What do they have to do to pick it back up again against number five Oregon? I think one of the main problems to their struggles recently has been the lack of power in the offense. Earlier in the season when they were playing non-conference tournaments against those teams, they still, the ball seemed to be flying out of Tempe and it was just power was dominant throughout the lineup. But now that we've gone a lot further, it seems as if they've regressed a little bit and that's kind of hurt them as, I mean, half of their losses, which is 16 losses on the season, have come when they haven't hit a home run in a game. And that's something that you can't really do. And we've been told that they're a small ball team, but sometimes you just have to rely on some power. Yeah, definitely. Now, coming into this season, there was a lot of hype around this pitching staff because Brianna Maha and Dale Rindak had done so well their year previously, and they were bringing in Kelsey Kessler, a transfer. But now there seems to be a decline in some of those numbers. If you look at the numbers, Kessler has pitched more than double of what the other two pitchers have pitched combined, the others being Rindak and Maha respectively, and she's just uh, destroyed their numbers as well, like combined, and that's something that, that you don't really want to see out of your staff. She's trying to make up for three pitchers, and that's not what you want to do. You want to have three solid pitchers instead of one good one trying to make up for the numbers of all three. And her complete game, she's got 11 on the season, and the other two have seven combined, and that's just kind of put some tax on her arm, and she's regressed a little bit as the season's gone on, too. Well, if they have any chance of, of winning against Oregon this weekend, it's going to be behind Kessler tonight. Thank you so much for uh, your insight, as always, Jacob. You can catch all of this weekend's coverage versus number five Oregon on CronkiteSports.com, and stick with us tonight on the Pac-12 Digital Network. Cronkite Sports will bring the first game of the series against the Oregon Ducks live tonight at 7 on pack-12.com. You can debate it all you want, but Arizona State Baseball is the most historic program in Tempe. If five titles aren't enough, a conference high seven players on the Pac-12 All-Century team should do the trick. Barry, Dustin, you know the names. But lately, the struggles are real. ASU hasn't made it to Omaha in five years, although Tracy Smith seems to be well on his way to changing that. His recruiting class ranks third in the nation this year. There's also a lot to cover, so luckily, ASU play-by-play -play man Dominic Caccionio is here to break down the details. Dom? 22 recruits sounds like a lot, but remember in baseball, recruits can be signed straight out of high school, and this number three class ranked by Perfect Game really has a lot of talent that could go into the draft. Who's gonna make it? We don't really know, but let's start with the top 100. These guys have the least chance of making it to campus, but there's still some hope for Sun Devil fans. The top two guys we're gonna look at, Reggie Lawson and Bo Bichette, They've been in conversations of the first two rounds of the draft. Very unlikely that they make it to Tempe. The next two guys, though, Gavin Lux and Spencer Van Skoik, they're from Skip's region in the northern Midwest, Wisconsin and Iowa, respectively. A very good chance they add depth to the weekend rotation. And then Carter Aldretti, a middle infielder from Florida, that's where we're going to need some help next season. As for Arizona, Ben Greenspan, the recruiting coordinator, has made it clear they want to thrive in Arizona again, as they've done with Tyler Williams and Garvin Alston Jr. staying in-state to join the Sun Devils. So you look at it, Chad McClanahan and Zane Strand, both great prospects at their respective positions here in the Grand Canyon State. Junior college transfers are such an X factor because they are technically draft eligible. But we start with Ethan Skender, who was already drafted by the Reds out of high school, a Midwest outfield prospect, and Jake Godfrey, who spent his freshman year at LSU 
transferred to a junior college, and now wants to be in the starting rotation for ASU baseball next season. Look, 22 recruits sounds like a lot, but at the end of the day, not all of them are going to make it, and there's a reason. They call it MLBU. Great stuff, Dom. In two years, Smith has done what Tim Esme struggled to consistently do, bring elite talent to Tempe. Esme had some nice classes of his own, but you can see this year's average player grade is higher than it was for any of Esme's years. Tracy Smith can keep it up year after year. Watch out, college baseball world. In a less than stellar season for ASU lacrosse, remember they lost four back in March, the Devils have been able to get back on track with wins over UNLV, University of Colorado, and of course, that team down south. The Devils have been led by seniors Adam Beechamp and Henry Archie. What does leadership sound like, though? Lacrosse reporter Catherine Fitzgerald decided to find out. Yeah, boys. Hey, let's go, 32s. Let's keep working. Let's go. Lots of game left. Let's keep working. Lots of game left. Let's keep working, boys. Let's go. There you go, Beach. There you go, boys. Let's go, Tommy. Let's go, Tommy. Here we go, boy. Keep an eye on that clock. Here we go, State. All day, Wes. All day with you. All day, baby. Great look. Great look. Hey, let's get another one here, Mids. Let's get another one here, Mids. If you took your left there, my guy would have, whoo, that little kick out like we talked about. Hey, no slide, Pat. No slide. One, one. Yeah, Pat. All day, baby. Great look. Great look. Yeah, hey, nice and patient. Nice and patient, boys. Nice and patient. Fellas, we did it. We put up 20 in a game. And that's Tommy. Great shot by Tom Carrasco. There you go, baby. Way to put that away. Way to bury it. Hey, Dre, move it on that crease. Let's distract them. Uh -huh. Make yeah, those slides yeah. tough. Let's keep working, boys. Let's go. We got lots of time. Thanks so much, Catherine. Now, when it comes to new media, we like to periscope before the games. Oh, of course, and they you show know, up on Twitter now, too. It's, it's like our own version of mic'd up. So to talk more about social media, we head over to Gavin Shaw. Well, guys, if I've learned anything in my two years on social media, it's that you're not you when you're hungry. And that's a point that Tracy Smith has confirmed time and time again. With the help of Andrew Snow, you see him compared to the gorilla. Guys, an important question for you, this Arizona State baseball team at points this season lacking power. Wouldn't you rather have the gorilla? I think he's going for the super, like the Cam Newton Superman celebration. So pull out the ass. Yeah, exactly, and, and he has yeah. super strength, so I think that's just as good as a gorilla. Yeah, I, I do understand what you're saying about the arms and the power and such, but Andrew Snow, he's been doing okay, so I, I'd like to keep him. So guys, Andrew Snow, the cousin of Dustin Pedroia, but doing his best Barry Bonds impersonation there. <laughs> Now we move on to Austin Withrill, who has very specific qualifications for a girlfriend. She has to have exactly 48 Instagram followers. Elaine, I know you're in a relationship, so I'm going to spare mm -hmm. you this question. Zach, you're not. How many Instagram followers do you look for in a potential girlfriend? Seeing as Elaine is the only female on set right now, I'm going to defer back to her. Oh, oh, oh wow. Yeah, I... Elaine, I all right, what's, I what's the ideal? What's the number? This. Okay, good. Uh, don't limit my followers. I want as many followers as I can get. There you go. I, I mean... Austin, come on. <laughs> All right, well, Zach, if you're going to compete with Austin, you can go after girls with less than 48 or more than 48, but 48, that girl's his. Touch. All right, third and final tweet. <laughs> We're sticking with Austin Withrow and Arizona State basketball. The running man challenge has been running its way through the ranks of college basketball, started in Maryland. Guys, it's your turn. Give me your best shot. Oh, I got, we got this. You just got to oh get gosh, a, you gotta a little get bit of a jerky motion. Got a you got to yeah. go back and forth a little bit. You need the, the, the hands up and switch. down. A little switch. I, I know. That's why we're journalists. That's. I mean, speak for yourself. Yeah, I, we, I me, was me, a, me and Elaine. No, me, me, me and Elaine can dance. I'm speaking for both of you. That was horrible. I was a dancer back in my day. I'm vouching for myself Yeah, this one. Yeah, I've dabbled in dance before. And guys, first Arizona State basketball proved it. Now the three of us have proved it. You don't have to go dancing to dance. Thank you so much, Gavin. We joke that we can't go more than two weeks on this show without talking about football, but for good reason. There's concern over how the Sun Devils performed last season, and with a graduating quarterback, there's a lot more questions than answers after the end of spring ball. But I'm excited about those three guys. I'm excited about the, we've done a great job of recruiting guys that are great uh, leaders, uh, winners. I like the fact that they're, they're very diverse in their talents. Battle is the quintessential storyline in spring ball, and it's expected to continue through the summer. The Devils open the season in Tempe against NAU September 3rd. 
six games into the season, AC Lacrosse was in flux with two wins and four losses. Well, a goalie switch and five games later, the Sun Devils are currently riding plenty of momentum heading into the SLC tournament, and they've done it on the back of freshman goaltender Johnny Perletti. The stats are pretty telling. The Sun Devils did not fare well with Russell Bart Bartle in net to start the season, but they have given up about three fewer goals per game with Perletti between the pipes. The top three, or the three top 15 wins, speak for themselves. So now we're going to bring in WCS and lacrosse analyst Blaine McCormick to preview ASU's matchup against USC. Now, Blaine, ASU is squaring off against USC, another team with plenty of momentum coming in. So what do the Devils have to do to make sure the Trojans don't surprise them on Sunday? Well, you sure are right about the USC Trojans having that momentum because this is the first time they've ever been in the SLC tournament playoff situation. But Arizona State has been here before, and especially at their home field. That's going to give a lot of momentum going to the Sun Devils way because they haven't had a game there for the past two weeks. Now, the biggest thing for them is their fan turnout. And once they get that momentum going for them and those cheers from the fans, I don't see any reason why they can't win this matchup. Well, you always have to account for a little bit of luck in the postseason. So we have to talk about the X Factor. Who is the X Factor for the Sun Devils? My X Factor goes to the faceoff middies, and that's Zach Mathian and Trevor Driscoll. Now, the last time these two teams met up, those uh, two faceoff men only lost three out of the 17 faceoffs that they had against the USC Trojans. Now, that was back in February, so things have changed for both of these teams. Another thing that I see going for them is the goalie situation. You mentioned Perletti earlier, but expect Bartle to maybe get some minutes in there because they both have great numbers. Now, on the other side of the field, Daniel Katzman for the USC Trojans has been a, having a remarkable season with a, a 66 save percentage and having 12 saves per game. That's incredible for a goalie at this standards, but I think ASU takes it in this one, but it's going to be close. 9-6 to six is my final score. Thanks, Blaine, and now remember that score so you can make fun of Blaine later on. And if you can't get <laughs> enough of ASU lacrosse or maybe just not enough of Blaine, check out our SLC playoff preview show for an in-depth breakdown of the conference. Then Sunday, join Blaine and the rest of the lacrosse crew as the Sun Devils play host to the USC Trojans. Live at 1 o'clock Arizona time on Cronkite Sports. Com. Now, hopefully, Blaine does get that prediction right because I don't want him to catch too much heat. Yeah, we love making predictions here. Really, it, it's probably something that we're best at. I'm fantastic at predictions. <laughs> now it's time to get into the way it is. You know how it goes. Questions, answers, winner, monologues. So let's get right to it. Elaine, how does ASU softball do against Oregon? Well, the optimist in me says that they're able to pull out the win today if they have Kessler in the circle. But the realist in me says they get swept by Oregon. Now, ASC Lacrosse, they have the SLC playoffs this weekend. They have to face USC, and if they beat them, they'll have to face Chapman. Can they win both? I'm going to trust Blaine, 9-6 to six over USC. And I think they do beat Chapman because uh, the Johnny Perletti has been on fire between the pipes, and though Chapman has scored a lot of goals, it was against a weaker North Division. Now, of course, we can't ignore a uh, ASU football because, well, it's football. it's football. So over the summer, what's Todd Graham's <laughs> biggest concern? It's that secondary. They didn't ever really solve it at the end of last year. Now they have Jordan Simone graduating. They got some young guys who maybe have a little more experience now and can help, but that's definitely the biggest concern going into the summer and the fall. Now talking about fall, what is the fall sport that you are most optimistic for coming uh, up in the season? I have to say football. I think it's a hot take. That is a I hot take. I think the, the expectations yeah. are so low <laughs> for Todd Graham's team that I think they'll get seven, you know, eight, nine wins is more than most people are thinking. I think, you know, if Brady White wins that quarterback job, which I think he will, and they rely okay. on Bellagio and, uh, and Demario Richard, they'll be just fine. Now it is the end of the semester, which means it's right. the end of the sports calendar pretty much. So what was your favorite moment, ASU sports? Well, I've got to say, being on the sideline for that ASU U of A football game, they had had it such a tough go about it up until that point so then when they got to that and they got that win it was just awesome to see the senior celebrating uh what about you zach i'm gonna go macy gardner breaking the kills record it was just awesome to see coming into that third and final set she needed uh, i think it was eight kills uh oh, to yeah. end that final set and everybody's like i don't know if she's gonna do it first five <laughs> point or first seven points she gets five kills awesome moment for an awesome player awesome absolutely so now the monitor changes in the back to one of us we're, we're tied at two apiece that's very true right it's, so it's a tiebreaker this is the tiebreaker for the semester for the semester win. Whatever. It's fine. Whew. It's fine. I, I'm, I'm proud of that. <laughs> All right. So this morning, if you were paying attention, the Players' Tribune dropped an article by ASU hockey coach Greg Powers. Powers went through the struggles as a club hockey coach. He was a secretary, equipment manager, recruiting manager, and exterminator. Now, currently, ASU has 38 club sports teams. Often, we scoff at the title club team. Don't take them seriously. But here are the facts. The club women's hockey team was just added this past year. The club men's rugby team is playing the Mexican national team tomorrow, and no one's going to hear about it. But we should take them more seriously. 
because you never know when money will appear on the doorstep and make them D1, and we should care before that happens, and that's the way that it is. All right, time for our top plays. We're gonna start with water polo starting in the pool. Look at this firepower behind the arm, straight into the goal. They ended up losing this one at 16 to six, but UCLA, a really tough opponent, one of their biggest games this season. a little bit of a season. laser show on that throw. <laughs> Speaking of laser show, onto the diamond, the ASU Sun Devils. Now check out this catch for, from Tyler Williams. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna stop it right, look at that. Right what? above the Snow ground. Cone status. You know what that is? He, he got him. He got got him. It's like an ice cream scoop. I used to work at TCBY, the, the country's best yeah, yogurt. Yeah. That's how. That was the technique we used. That was. That's the way to do it. Now for our top play, baseball got a shutout win. First of all, the bat breaks. It's an aluminum bat, and then it's a shutout over number 15 Cal when this team wasn't doing so well. Hey, so. Zach Dixon, the freshman. Yes. Shout out to Las Vegas. Shout out to Centennial <laughs> High School. He texted his dad saying that he got the start. And then his dad was like, why? You've only thrown one <laughs> inning the entire season. Well, Dad, look at him now. Complete game shutout. Helping ASU beat Cal in a series. That was an upset, too. Definitely worthy of stuff. our top play, for sure. Oh, and, and, you know, there's bound to be more top plays this weekend with everything that is going on. We've got softball at 7 p.m. tonight on the Pac-12 digital stream. And then this weekend on Sunday, ASU versus USC, 1 p.m. Full coverage of both and baseball, all of that on CronkiteSports.com. Well, for Elaine Wilson, I'm Zach Pocket. Thank you so much for joining us today and for the rest of the semest semester. The rest of the semester. <laughs> semester. Have a good one.